So we have these chromosomes now, and we've made two of them. Um, but we need to start thinking about a lot of the other things that, that they're going to achieve. And I, I think that one of those that we need to think about is just really the process of, of what these replicated chromosomes look like and how we distribute them. Okay? And so if we look at this first slide here, um, uh, this is something that probably many of you have seen before and is actually a, a good summary of um, the chromosomes that are present within a human cell. Um, and so this is what we refer to as a carrier type. In this case, this is the most beautiful carrier type in the entire planet um, that at least I've seen. Um, it probably the reprodu reproduction of this isn't perfect, but the reason this is the most beautiful carrier type is actually this is my daughter's carrier type. And so this is the um, you know, composition of her chromosomes, and which is obviously intrinsically beautiful. And you can see it's my daughter because she has two X chromosomes and no Y chromosome. But other than that, um, she's like, you know, all, all of us, and um, with a few exceptions, where she has 46 uh, different chromosomes, 23 pairs. And so she got half of those from me and half of those from her mom. And you can see that uh, these chromosome pairs exist. And there's a bunch of different features of them that we're going to come back to. For example, there's a little bit of a pinching in, in the middle um, that we'll discuss. These chromosomes have hugely different sizes. So here, um, chromosome 1 is massive. Um, chromosome uh, 21 is on the smaller side. Um, that Y chromosome, uh, if an individual has that, is, is also going to be a smaller chromosome. Um, but this is a good, pretty good representation of, of what many uh, animals and, and eukaryotes will have. The 46 chromosomes, we're going to talk a lot about how do we actually distribute all of those today, and then how do we do that differently in, in meiosis. Um, this can vary dramatically across individuals and, and organisms. Um, so, for example, there's an ant species in Australia that has just one single chromosome. And then there's other organisms, um, many plants, for example, that can have um, hundreds of different chromosomes. And so the actual number of physical units can vary, but our goal in each one of these cases is to figure out how to take these chromosomes, to replicate them as we just did, um, and then also now to be able to distribute them to the two new cells. So I'm going to show you another picture now. And this picture should, in many ways, look quite similar. So if you're staring at that there, uh, you can see that, it, again, there's um, um, 23 different units. This one has um, you know, two uh, down at the bottom, X and, look at X and Y, they're a little bit different here. Um, this should look a lot like the previous one in some ways, and yet there's one major difference, which is that actually these are not chromosomes now. Um, they are socks, okay? And so we're, we're going to use today socks as our karyotype to really think about the processes of uh, chromosome segregation and, and cell division. And so they, you know, they have bands here, they have different portions of it. Uh, you can see, say, heterochromatin, for example. There's a place where they're sort of uh, um, you know, um, pinched together in some way. And there's these two of these socks. They're identical uh, to each other in, in, in every way. And so we're going to think about really what that process looks like and actually what we really need to achieve. What are the other principles that we need to uh, achieve for this? Okay. So in this case, I brought socks uh, today. And we're going to imagine a cell that has seven different chromosomes. And so you can see here these seven different chromosomes that are, are present. And so here we have this nucleus. We've got a, um, you know, a um, metazoan cell that where the, um, you know, they're all trapped within that nucleus. At some point um, during mitosis, the nuclear envelope is going to break down in the cell that we're talking about. But now during SFAs, we've copied these. We have uh, identical copies of each one of these seven, seven chromosomes. Okay. So I, as the cell now, have a, a pretty big task, which is I need to take these and distribute them to the two new cells. And so my job is we're going to build a, a physical machinery, the mitotic spindle that we spoke about um, in the microtubule lecture, um, to be able to physically capture these and then distribute them to the two new cells. Okay? That spindle is going to be blind, though. It's going to be able to hold on to things, but it actually really can't see them. We're going to talk about the mechanisms it's going to use that. So I'm going to be the cell. I'm going to be the division apparatus, um, but I'm going to be blinded. And so I'm going to build myself this um, you know, blinded system here. I've got a scarf that's going to um, keep me from actually being able to see what's going on. And so now I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to grab these chromosomes. The nuclear envelope is going to break down. I'm going to open this up. And I'm going to have to come up with a way to distribute them. Okay? So we need one physical unit in one cell, one in another. And so I'm going to um, come in here and, and grab the, the chromosomes. I'm going to split them off uh, to either side. Another group. I'm going to split off to either side. And one here, one there. 
one here, one there. So I'm making sure that each cell gets, you know, half of the DNA. And I think that's a, a pretty good way to go. Um, I'm, I actually feel pretty comfortable about my ability, oh no, I lost the chromosome there, let's go that way, to physically distribute them. And so now I'm going to check how I did, okay? And if this had actually been a cell and I had been distributing it, it would be a problem. So this cell over here got two copies of this chromosome and it got uh, two copies of this chromosome, but it did not get this chromosome or this chromosome, okay? That, that's a problem. That's not going to be a, a, a good thing. Probably both of those cells are going to die. One of those cells may end up being a, a cancerous cell at some point. Um, you know, there's uh, other sort of dysfunction and disease that can arise from this. That would have been highly problematic. That's only seven chromosomes. You imagine the same process with all uh, 23 of our pairs, 46 different chromosomes. That's a lot of uh, uh, challenges to face. And so you could imagine, you know, one way to do that would be build a system that you know, let my eyes be open and I recognize these and make them different. It's very, very hard to build a system where you can independently recognize each unit of DNA. And so instead we need a system that can be much more flexible in enabling us uh, to be able to distribute them no matter how many different physical units that we have, okay? So the way that we're gonna achieve that for the cell is to do something very similar to what you do when you fold laundry is that I wanna be able to wear the right pair, not some random pair. And so I have these clean socks here um, okay, I need to make sure that I have these together and that they don't fall apart in my drawer. I'm going to pair them up, okay? And similarly here, I'm going to take these, I'm going to pair them up. I'm going to take this one, I'm going to uh, pair them up. So I'm replicating them now, but instead of just letting them be loose, now I'm going to, um, you know, um, put them together. And I, I think as all of you know from having done laundry, it's very easy to lose a sock. We really don't want to lose our chromosomes. We want to be, have our cells be much more efficient than um, you know, each of us is doing laundry and some cell, chromosome cell, or sock gets lost in the dryer somewhere. And so I'm going to package these back into the nucleus. They have been replicated now, but while the replication was happening, they got paired. Okay? And so if we seal back up our nucleus, I build my cell division apparatus by blinding myself to this process. Now I can try it again and see how well I did. Okay, so nuclear envelope breaks down. I build a separation apparatus. I'm going to grab these. And particularly now you can see that I'm grabbing it. My two elbows are the ends of the mitotic spindle. This is where our centrosomes are. We're going to hold on to this. And now I'm going to grab it so that I know that I have both of them held. And I'm going to pull them off to opposite directions. And here, keep continuing this process. Of course, we're, the cell's doing all at once. Build the spindle, attach, pull them in opposite directions. Build the spindle, attach, pull them opposite directions. Of course, I don't want to do something like this where I just pull them both, both ways. I really need to know that I can grab onto them, physically anchor them, capture them. So a microtube is going to come in here and hold onto this. But not just hold onto one of these socks, but hold onto both in opposite ways and pull them apart. Okay, so we're going to have to talk through all of the physical events that we need to, to achieve this process of um, grab, capturing, grabbing, holding onto both, and distributing to both ends of the cell. Okay, and let's see, make sure I did it all right. Okay, and now if I look at it, two perfectly replicated uh, sets of, of cells. I can come in, bring down the hammer, separate them off. Perfect cell, I can repackage it within the nuclear envelope and it can uh, replicate again as it, as it goes through.